Hi, my name is Adam Hamlin. I'm the editor of WebPixel and welcome to WebPixel Live. I'm joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to be here. Nice. Looks like you're um, in a coral reef in the Red Sea, I would guess. Somewhere like yeah, that. Looks Simon very nice. Red Sea. Yeah, I wish I was. Oh, I can yeah. dive into it, it being a green screen. <laughs> but I, I, I dive into it, it just lifts up and goes out the way. So it's not, really... <laughs> not, <laughs> not quite the same experience, is it? Um, yeah. Unfortunately. Um, so um, there's an active thread on the WebPixel forum at the moment, um, and we thought we might discuss this uh, a bit further. And, and the thread um, basically is asking the question, what are the advantages of mini domes? Um, and for the purpose of the discussion, I think we're sort of going to limit it to sort of four inch, 100 mil ish domes as being as define that as a mini dome. So what are the advantages of having these small domes? Alex? Why? Why should people be be getting a small dome? Well, uh, I think there's a couple of things to say, first of all, is that one of the attractions of small domes, or the attractions of small domes that are not really photographic attractions, that they are smaller, lighter, cheaper, which are obviously good for lots of things like, like travel, um, and they're good for, um, good for bank balance, and they may be good for your relationship with your significant other that you know, you're buying cheaper, cheaper, cheaper gear. So those things are big attractions to photographers. Hmm. Um, how critical a lot of these these po the other the photographic points that we'll get onto are also depend a huge amount on the camera system you're using and it's i think the format of your camera system whether you're on a let's say a two times crop micro four thirds one and a half times crop aps-c type camera or you're on a, a full frame camera and whether that's a mirrorless or a, a slr full frame um i you know the 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 importance of a lot of these issues are related to that. So I would say that, you know, if you are a full frame photographer, a mini dome is something that you're likely to use relatively sparingly. Whereas if you're a micro four thirds photographer, your standard dome is probably, it may well be a four inch or four and a half inch mini dome. So this is the mini dome that I use on my SLR. And I'm gonna sort of talk from my perspective as a, as a full frame photographer, where this is an accessory that I'm very, very happy to own but I would never consider it my main dome port. So I think it's worth it's worth pointing out. This is a, this, I'm just measuring it. There we go. Look at that. It's look at to that. 98.7 mil. Not a <laughs> uh, Please, mini dome. <laughs> to be precise. The, yeah, um, well, there you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, the um, the um, I've got one. I've got one in my chromosome rib. I'm not going to get it out. Anyway, um, what, you, what you use yours for, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go to the micrometer jokes. Um, the um, uh, the the small the, the the smaller your sensor, the smaller dome you can get away with. I think this is an important distinction to make. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's um, it, it, yeah, and I think that's an important thing. And it, it's really related to how the corners of your image perform. The bigger the dome point you put in front of a wide angle lens, as a general rule, the better the corner performance of your or your picture. And that's why we can't all use mini domes all the time, because if we're limited to using these smaller domes, we end up with image quality that doesn't really hold up once we get away from the, from the middle of the picture, unless we make big compromises. But I really wanted to focus on the advantages of them, and the photographic advantages are really twofold. Is first of all, the smaller dome means that the front of your lens, because there's less sort of air and glass in front of it, is closer to your subject, and therefore it's easier to get more magnification on your foreground subject with a small dome than it is with a big dome. But more significant than that is the smaller footprint of this dome makes it easier to get light from your strobes onto that close subject than it is with a big dome. Now, as soon as you get you know, this far away, it makes no difference at all. We're really talking about when a subject is this close to my other finger here being the lens, that gives you really big magnification. With a big dome, that would be touching the dome and you'd never, first of all, you'd be, you, know, you would have to be further away because the dome would be in the way, but you'd also never get light to it. Whereas with a mini dome, you can light a subject this close to the dome and that would definitely be within a big dome. So that's what it's giving you. It's giving you extra subject magnification and a much better quality of light when taking that because you can get the light round your camera onto it. It's, it's easy to light something that's far away. It's yeah. hard to light something that's close. And a mini dome really helps it in that regard. You've got to imagine that the light coming out of your strobes is cones um, coming mm. out from, from your strobes. And, and you know that as your subject gets closer and closer to the dome, um, 
you know what what basically happens is it gets harder and harder to get the inside edge of that cone to to be on the subject and often you see this if you look at your images and you discover that you've got dark patches typically in the center of the frame basically what that's saying is that you haven't managed to get the strobes around and to light up that bit right in front of the dome so in other words in that instance the the subject is too close for your lighting um, and, and that's the most critical bit of the photo because that's the yep. bit you've you know, put in the middle, you focused yeah. on, you know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's really the eyeball or whatever it may be. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so the, the, uh, and in many ways, I mean, I think, I think the advantage of me done really revolves around this idea of being able to apply lighting rather than really. Um, and, and, and this is kind of goes back to this idea is what are the advantages of me done well, they allow you to light close subjects. Um, what are the disadvantages of mini domes? Well, there are quite a few. So what we should really accept is that in general, mini domes are a useful adjunct for most people to having a bigger dome, um, but not normally a replacement for it. Now, the, the proviso being that if you've got smaller size sensors, that may well not be the case. But with people shooting with um, crop sensor SLRs um, or mirrorless, or certainly full frame sensors, um, you know, you probably want to look at this as being a useful tool for a specific job, but not a replacement for a, for a conventional size dome. W would you agree with that, Alex? Is that? Yes, and I think if you're starting out and you're building a system, you know, you may well, you know, choose a mini dome early on because it's cheaper, with the intention of buying a bigger dome later later on. I mean, you know, I think, you know, yeah. the serious underwater photographer, the sort of person who's watching wet pics or live they're long term going to probably want to own more than one dome port. And, you know, if you, if you have to buy one before the other, because, you know, for financial reasons, it's the way most of us do these things. Then if you if you go the mini dome first, you've just got to be aware of its limitations and its limitations really are on ultimate optical performance. But maybe in your early days, that doesn't bother you too much. Um, you can get around that reduced corner sharpness quite a lot with domes by shutting the lens right down. Yeah. Um, and when you're very close to a subject, you'll certainly have plenty of strobe power to be able to shut the lens right down. You might, again, once you start getting really shut down, you might lose a little bit of image quality to diffraction, but it's better than having big smudges right through the corners of your picture, which you'd get if you don't shut the lens right down with, with a mini dome. Um, the bigger dome allows you to not have to shut down as much and still get good corner sharpness and not have the problem of diffraction. Um, as well. Not that the diffraction is the major issue, but as the cameras get to higher and higher megapixels, you are throwing away a fair amount of image quality by going to shut down. So I typically on full frame, when I shoot with the mini dome, I'll shoot around F18, something like that with the mini dome. And that gives me pretty good corners with the mini dome. On a, yeah. on, when I shoot with my big dome, I'll shoot F13 and I know that my corners are great. Yeah. There's another advantage why it's good to shut down when doing a mini dome is I'm usually putting a mini dome on for very close focus work. And when, when you focus the lens closer, your background will quickly become blurred. So yeah. shooting those more stop down pictures will give you more background detail. And while that's not always essential, typically in a wide angle picture, you want the, the whole scene to be contributing and you want the whole scene to be as sharp as possible. So shutting the lens down is good. You've certainly got plenty of light to do that with your strobes because they're so close. The only downside of shutting that lens right down is you then, because you've got the small aperture, to get the, the balanced light exposure, to get the ambient light coming in, you probably need to run a relatively slow, slow shutter speed. So that, that becomes a limitation as well. Yeah. Um, so, but, 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 but yeah, that's the kind of typical way I use it. Is, you know, and I'll use it when I really want to get close to subjects and get that pop effect with my full frame camera. Yeah. And that, would you use a teleconverter with that, Alex, or not? Um, sometimes. Sometimes I will. I mean, I typically... These days, use this with the 8 to 15, yeah. and I'll sometimes use it with teleconverter, sometimes not. Um, and I, but it need, need, and I just, just changed the port extension. I don't have currently a zoom gear that works with my teleconverter. So um, if I put the teleconverter on, it's knowing what it's going to do. So I posted some pictures on that thread on WetPixel, and one was with a teleconverter and one wasn't. The frogfish yeah. was a teleconverter shot, and the, the Nassau group of picture I shared on, on the WetPixel thread was a non-teleconverter. Shot, yeah, shot, yeah. Both shot, yeah. So um, that's, I mean, I think that would be a, probably a, a good way of looking for um, close. Obviously, when you're looking at images, they um, exif, they don't show what dome size you've used. Um, so, uh, do you add dome size on your metadata? I no, don't. No, only, only. It might be on some things when I was testing new domes. Yeah, you know, yeah. when you know, if there's something that's specific, but no, I don't. I, I wouldn't. It's, I don't. But, but, you know. 
you, you, could, you could look under the focal length of the lens. So, so if you're searching on amuster.com, you could look for, for 8 to 15 millimeter, for example, and that would probably show you. And you should then be able to see to some extent those images where the subject is really, really close um, are probably shot with a mini dome. I think that's probably a reasonable way of looking at it. And then it would be very interesting to look at the camera settings that, that you've shot them with. So. The thing I would add to this whole conversation, though, is I don't always use this solution because my common fisheye lens that I use is an Iconos 13 mil. And the reason that lens is so nice to you, or one of the main reasons that lens is so nice to use as an underwater photographer is it's got a similar size front footprint to this, but it's got better image quality than the big dome. So it's yeah. very much the, you know, have your cake and eat it lens. It, it has the advantages of the mini dome and the advantages of the big dome all in one lens. Um, and that's, that's what water contact or, you know, water corrected optics give you. But unfortunately, it has the price tag of a, of a big dome and, a, and, a, and everything else. So, so, so it gets, you lose the price advantage, certainly. But, yeah, and you can't do split levels. So if you want to do split levels, you still have to buy the big dome and the normal fisheye as well. So, yeah, yeah. it just gets more and more expensive, Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, let, let's run with that. Um, thank you, Alex. Great information as always. Um, um, and I'd like to thank our sponsor, which is City Bags Underwater, um, for sponsoring this episode. Um, please feel free to add your comments below, or, or possibly in the Wet Pixel Forum as well, where there is an active thread. So, so this discussion is ongoing, and it's probably a, a good place to look. And Alex's pictures are on there as well. Um, please drop us a like if you enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you again soon.